All right, welcome back. Um, I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce you to uh, the next speaker, Favor Kelvin. Um, she's going to speak about how non programmers can contribute to open source and Mothic. Um, she's a software engineer and technical writer. She loves to build and create things for the web. She's working with Mautic on the Google season of Docs, actually, where she's currently working on a knowledge base articles together with the education team. Um, she was also a former Google Summer of Code intern at Sugar Labs. Favor, welcome. How are you today? Very well, fine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I would say without further ado, uh, please go ahead and, uh, and have your presentation. Um, sure. Just before we, before we start, um, if you have any questions for the end of the session, feel free to post them at the link below. Um, we'll get to those at the end of the session. And um, for now, I would like to, to say welcome and uh, please, please go ahead and give the presentation. All right, thank you. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever I are in the world. Thank you for joining this session. I'm going to be talking on how non-programmers can contribute to open source Amatic. Uh, but before we move on that, just a little about myself. Thank you, Dennis, for the brief introduction. Um, I am a founding member of Open Source Community Africa, a contributor to Sugar Labs, a Google Season of Docs, uh, Motic, uh, working with the education team. And uh, I was formerly a Google Summer of Code intern at um, Sugar Labs. So we we'll just like move on to the topic. Uh, so uh, I'm talking on how non-programmers can contribute to open source. The aim of this uh, topic is to give you more insight on how you can make non-coding contributions to open source. You don't necessarily have to be a developer before you can make contributions to open source. And uh, I'm going to talk about importance and why you should also think about making contributions to open source. Uh, we all know what open source is. Open source is a term used to refer to open source uh, software. And open source software is a software that is publicly accessible. Uh, publicly accessible means uh, it can be used, distributed, and sent and uh, by the public. And uh, it's not uh, privately owned is something that the public can access. So that's like open source and contributing to open source can be a very rewarding experience as you can be able to learn, teach and build experience in just any skill you can uh, imagine. So that's like the beauty of contributing to open source. And um, I'll move on to why you should contribute to open source. Okay, uh, using myself as a case study. Well, contributing to open source, you're making impact to the community that you are part of at large. For example, you're contributing to uh, a software or a programming language that is being used by millions of people. And just you're making that tiny bit of contributions can change the, the way that software is being used and can make the using that software experience much better for the users. And that is a way of making impact uh, to the community and, and users at large. So that's like one importance of uh, uh, contributing to open source. Uh, career growth is another importance of contributing to open source. When you contribute to open source, you can be able to build skills and um, learn stuff that can be able to, that will be useful long term in your career. Contribute to open source, people learn time management, people learn how to work uh, in a distributed team, people let, pick up on skills that formerly they wouldn't have picked up on, people set up spaces for themselves, or oh, okay, this is what I should do, this is what I should not. People get involved in communities, people do a lot of things. And this is very, very good for career growth. So contribute to open source, give you that platform where you can be able to grow in your career. And um, another uh, importance of contributing to open source is pe uh, skills, people skills. Contribute to open source, you can be able to learn how to talk to other people who are in the community. For example, if you're part of the multi community, um, if you contribute to multi community, you definitely interact with people in the community. You learn how you should be able to interact with people that are not just in your time zone, people that people of different mindset and know how to use words that are less offensive to people, know what to say at every given time so that you don't step on toes. So people skills is something that people learn when they contribute to open source. And uh, another uh, 
a uh, thing that is very important when contributing to open source is a uh, remote work experience. People gain remote work experience when contributing to open source. And sometimes they show these in their CVs. Okay, this is what I did during that time. This is what I did when contributing to open source. And so remote work experience is something people gain. Uh, you're able to work with teams uh, from different time zones, work with the distributor team, uh, so that's where the remote work experience thing comes in. And the last one here is paid opportunities. So contributing to open source gives you the room for you to get uh, paid. For example, you can uh, be involved in bounties. Uh, so organizations uh, give bounties to people who uh, work on certain parts of their code or documentations. Uh, you can also be involved in things like Hacktoberfest. You can also be involved in... Uh, Things like um, uh, Google Season of Docs, which I'm currently doing with Motic, or Google Summer of Code. So, cut, um, uh, involving yourself in these organizations can get you uh, paid, and this can only happen when you are contributing to open source. So, uh, I just gave you like a brief summary of the importance why you should contribute to open source. So, we we'll just move on to ways we can contribute to open source without actual writing code. So number one way I have here is by being an open source evangelist. So as a project evangelist, you have some technical knowledge, that's right, but you don't have to be a developer. You don't necessarily have to like write codes. Um, your main duty would be to invite contributors to the project through events, hackathons, digital communications, and make it easy for people who want to get started by maintaining relevant documentation like the README, the contributing guides, and the reason to the project to people at Open Source Sprint. So just like as I'm doing here, there's this Motic uh, to people who haven't started uh, or who just heard about Motic due to the Moticon event. So this is what being an open source evangelist is. Introduce that project to people and also try to uh, get people into the beginning stage of contributing to that project. So an evangelist may have may also have to invite users to the project so as to solicit their feedback and forward it to the developer contributor. So these are like the role of an open source evangelist in a, um, which is not a, a, a coder. So another one is by reviewing the project. So a reviewer is a person who visits the project GitHub repo, project website, looks through the projects and the product and gives feedback on what should be improved and, uh, be, and what we should also focus on. So that's like a reviewer. A reviewer might come, oh, I had a quick look on this project. I think we should do this, we should do that. Maybe Motic could be this, Motic could be that, or we could use this in Motic, or we could not use that in Motic. So, by me reviewing that project, you're already contributing to open source because you're bringing out your time to actually do that, which will make the uh, people who use Motic have a lot better experience using the product. So another way to uh, contribute to open source as a non-programmer, uh, non-code contribution to open source is by using the open source product. So a user of an open source product is um, practically uh, an open source contributor because uh, as a user, you are like, like the most important part of an open source um, project. Uh, if not for you, nobody would want to build it. So I think that's like the major the, the major people in this open source non-code contributions, the open source product uh, software are the users. So the user would deploy the solution, uh, download, install, attempt to use it, and then if the project goes wrong, they, they give feedback to developers who build it, and developers can now uh, work on those feedback that is being given. So uh, I think, uh, furthermore, we have uh, by using, okay, we've already gone by using an open source project. Another one should be by creating educational materials and content. So by creating educational materials and, okay, by creating educational materials and content, it just by contributing and okay, I'll take creating educational materials and content and contributing to documentation at the same time. So by creating educational materials and content, it's more like creating things that will enable people who want to use that product to, uh, uh, to use it more easily. For example, Motic have a, a blog. Motic have people who write about Motic. Motic have its documentation, the product documentation and the knowledge-based documentation. So now, 
the, the these contents that have been put out there will enable anyone who wants to use Motic for the first time or even a constant user of Motix, you're able to go through these articles or go through this educational content or go through these documentations when they don't, uh, they, are, they are hooked somewhere or stuck or are trying to find a solution to something. So people who take out their time to create this content are also active contributors to open source. They are practically not writing code, but they are just writing step-by-step -step guidelines and and uh, on how to use a particular product. So these people who educate other people on how to use this product, who write documentations, articles, blog posts on a particular product uh, with uh, our, our open source contributors. These are also, this is a way to contribute to open source. So I think another one will be by signing up to be a preview user and better test user. By signing up to be a preview user and better test user, uh, as diff you're quite different from a normal user. Now, like you're a test user. When uh, Motic, Motic normally have users who test when we release a particular software uh, and they test and try to look for bugs and things that probably would go wrong if the other users start to use it and give the feedback to developers who then work on it and before releasing it to the main user. So these beta test users, uh, preview users are very important. And this is also a way for you to contribute to open source. And um, these preview users are usually referred to as insiders because they start using the product or the latest version of the product before anyone else uses it. I already said that earlier. and. Uh, and um, when they use it or test up this product, they, they look for things that uh, could go wrong and uh, tell the developers and they work on it before it is into the general public. So I'll uh, move on to the next slide. Okay, organizing conferences and meetups. Okay, just like uh, Multicon, we had a lot of people who offered and volunteered to organize the conference and work behind the scenes. All of these people have contributed to open source. This is a way to contribute to open source because the people who worked on the ground to organize this conference to make it the way it is, they put out their time and everything to make, and uh, those people uh, made this whole conference um, very interactive and all that, and uh, which which to the to the to the um, to the uh, expectations of the audience. So all these people who do that are open source contributors. Open source contributors are contributors who contribute and make products or anything or, or services that will be very very um, uh, interactive or uh, good to the end users. So now by organizing conferences and meetups, this is similar to a content creator, but they play quite different role. A meetup organizer plays the role of creating, organizing voluntary and uh, their time to help run events that are based on open source software. They are, most of them are not being paid to do this, but they do it out of their own free will. So this is a way to um, um, contribute to open source. So they are not necessarily coding, they're not writing any behind code that is running. They're just volunteering their time, their efforts and everything so that the, the, the whole conference runs to the expectations of the audience and people who are uh, in the conference. So I think another one will be seeing what the project is. So when you are using the project, you, you'll be able to see what could be improved in that project. So uh, that is, uh, that is a way of, of contributing to open source because if uh, because if uh, some people use Motic for their marketing automation, email marketing and the rest. So once they use it, they feel, okay, Motic is lagging in this. Motic needs to improve in this. And, and they give their feedback to Motic. And Motic now uh, works on that. They've already contributed to open source because they, they didn't really write code. But that may act will make someone using Motic to have less problems. Uh, when a person is using the Motic uh, software. So this is a way to contribute to open source. Then another way is by donating money. So open source is mostly free, okay? And uh, well, most of these projects are being maintained by money. So money pays for, service, uh, for services such as servers, bandwidth, and other open source expenses. And uh, 
And this is a way to contribute to an open source uh, software. So you could donate money. Some organizations have like links where you can donate money. Some people don uh, can donate to conferences that are being organized, you can donate to things that the organization needs. So if you cannot do all of the above that I've listed up, you can donate your money. That money you're donating will go a long way to sustaining that software. So another one is helping others in the forum. So when you're being part of the community, you're either part of their Slack channel or you're part of their forum. So once you're in this uh, Slack channel or forum, you can uh, answer to questions that people drop time to time. So some people come to the forum and like, okay, how can I use Motic? How can I do this? How can I run this? How can I do that? Oh, I have issues installing Motic on my own end. You can be able to answer them. So just may offering your time to answer these people uh, is a way to contribute to open source. So another way, another very important one is translating the software. So Motic is being used by people from... Uh, different parts of the world, okay? People who speak English, people who don't, people who speak uh, multiple languages. So um, translating the software to your own language, that people who use Motic in this language can have it easier and have it in their local language is a way to contribute to open source. And um, you don't necessarily need to write code, you're just translating the software. You can use a software translation tool, or you can, if you're really good in writing, in your local language, you can't do it. So just may often have only through your time to do this is a way to contribute to open source. And the last but not least, I think there's two more, but I'm going to stop on this, is uh, helping with graphics or design. So um, designers can get in on the action to project generally require some design work, whether it is graphics creation or user interface design. So a um, way to do this is by checking your favorite project and say, okay, this is the way I can improve the user experience of this uh, project and offer your design skill or design ideas to the community and give them reasons why this should be implemented. But this is also a way to contribute to open source. So. Uh, onto the next slide. So here are like different ways people can contribute to open source. You can be a designer, you can be a researcher, you can be a technical writer, you can um, help in the forum through engagement, you can uh, be a product manager, you can be a translator, you can be a donor, you can be a QA tester, most importantly, you can be a user. So these are like the various ways one can contribute to open source. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be a developer where you write codes. Um, these are like various ways. Open source is large and it's like a huge umbrella that covers everybody. So you can pick the one that you can effectively do and be part of it. So um, moving on to the next in my slide. Okay, so get started with contributing a Motic. So I think the very first way to get started contributing in Motic is by um, joining our Slack channel. So we have our main list and Motic forum. So when you join our Slack channel, our main list, that's like the first step. So once you're there, you like uh, look for the team that you want to join. We have a community team, so we have the product team, we have the education team, we have the community, websites, maintainers, and marketing team and then look through what the project needs and probably just observe, look through what the project needs. If you're not clear about things, you can reach out to people like Ruth, Dennis, uh, AK, and they can walk you through Motic and how to make use of Motic and what, and if you're looking to contribute in any way possible, you can also raise that up in our Motic forums and Slack channel and um, you will be given an attention and then you can tell them, okay, this is where I want to contribute. So I, you'll be walked through ways on how to do that. Okay, you can also diagonize a board. You can use Motic and also look for uh, ways to improve the software. And then you can be a better uh, test. Uh, you can be a better tester. You can be part of the people who test Motic uh, first releases or latest releases before it is being moved to the public. Uh, I already explained how a beta tester contributes to open source. So uh, generally, joining our Motic community, you'll be able to collaborate, learn, and grow. 
So uh, Motic also participates in open source um, um, open source uh, um, uh, programs such as uh, Google Season of Dogs, Hacktoberfest. Uh, so Motic is very very active in open source space, and uh, probably we might have room to participate in more open source programs like Google, some of Google, the ETC. But I really don't know the plan for now. But I think with where things are going would have uh, be more expanded in that direction. And uh, Matic is an open organization that accepts everybody and um, uh, contributors from different parts of the world that be welcome to contribute in any aspect that they want and in any capacity that they want. All right, thank you. That's the end of my talk today. All right, Dennis, over to you. All right, thank you very much. And we're back. Um, yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. Let me check if we received any questions so far. Um, I'm not seeing any questions yet. So if anyone has questions, feel free to ask them at the link below. And yeah, I just want to say, I think it's, it's a very, very relevant topic and very interesting for people uh, to see how, even if they're not technical, can, can contribute to Matic. Um, I wanted to, to ask you actually, like you are contributing now in terms of for the season of dogs and what was your, um, your experience when you first heard about Mautic? I think it was via Google, right? Because they organized season of dogs. Yes. Yes. When I heard about Mautic, I, I had to go to the organizations with me and the organizations document. And I had to go through multi GitHub uh, because multi um, documentation is hosted on GitHub. And I had to go through it and look for areas that I could contribute and start contributing to uh, the multi documentation. Generally, the multi team is very responsive. Uh, people I work with, uh, Leon is very, uh, Leon helps me in things that I do not understand, both roots. So the multi uh, uh, team is uh, very very good to work with because they is a very is a community where you can be able to collaborate, learn, and grow also. So, all the, throughout the months that I've worked with the multi to the knowledge based article, I've been able to write more articles and I've also been able to know how to structure my articles a lot better, and also be able to improve in technical writing. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um... So I, I get that the, the team that you work with is very responsive and active. Um, yes. So, but you mentioned about GitHub. I can imagine that GitHub is not like a very user-friendly uh, place to actually get started with, with contributing. Uh, okay, I've already started using GitHub before now. So it was like um, easy to... Uh... So your connection is breaking up a bit. Does, does it help? Wait, can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's fine. You can just you started. Now? Yeah, you just started to talk about GitHub, and then the, the connection was was gone for a second. All right. So, um, for me, I've already been used to GitHub, so it was not like uh, a hassle to navigate around GitHub. But for people who are not used to GitHub, Motic documentation, uh, I think below it have. Um, this edits the documentation below it. So it's very easy for someone who wants to contribute to the documentation to just click on it and make uh, the edits the person wants to make to the documentation and from there create a pull request. So it's a lot easier for someone who is not really used to uh, uh, GitHub. So but if you're used to GitHub, you can just check um, the Motic on GitHub and check Motic documentation and Motic knowledge base and make um, the contributions you want to. There are open issues that uh, need to be worked on. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And what is your experience from the previous projects you worked on? Do they also work via GitHub? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but the previous ones that I did, which is not Motic, were code projects. So. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, so, 
you you also mentioned something about like if you want to get started you can you can reach out to Mautic via a variety of ways you can go to slack to uh to github there's there's a lot of yeah exactly yes what, what would you recommend for someone who wants to actually get started so they they are a Mautic user so they just start using the product and they find that the documentation is not sufficient for them what would be your your go-to channel for them should they go to slack should they go to whatever other platform okay so i feel if you feel like there's an issue with documentation and you can use github very well you can create an issue in multi documentation and uh, when you create an issue we we'll probably see it the maintainers of that repo would see it and uh, get back to you on that particular issue that has been created but if you're not used to um, using GitHub, then going through Motic Forum uh, is another way uh, to get uh, to make your request known and raise up an issue there. And if you're not like comfortably going through Motic Forum, you can also use the Slack channel. Uh, I think the Slack channel um, it's uh, in the documentation. Um, so if you go to the Slack channel, multi class channel, you'll be able to also join the multi community there and also raise your requests or your issues, whatsoever it may be. Perfect. So the people who are familiar with GitHub, they would most likely use that platform. Um, I yes. know that a lot of non-technical people normally don't have a GitHub account. So indeed, the forums might be a good place for them. Yes, uh, the forums would be a good place for them because uh, the forum is active and a lot of people yeah. are always ready to answer your request or issues or complaints or whatever it may be. Yeah, perfect. Um, I have one last question because I see there's no other um, about your season of docs contribution. Do you think that after the project is finished that you will in the future that you might do more things for Mautic? What, what do you think about the product most in definitely, general? Most definitely, most um, definitely. I'm already part of the Mautic community. I love the Mautic community. And, and so um, if the Mautic community wasn't favorable or it was a bit toxic, I've asked no dogs, I would just run away. <laughs> but <laughs> Mautic community is uh, it's a very lovable community. It's more like a family. So. Yeah, so after the season of dogs, I'll be part of the uh, of Motic and also make more contributions and also see ways to also structure the documentations to be better. So definitely, I'll continue working with the education team, with Leon, with Roots, ETC. I'll keep on working with them so we'll be able to uh, maintain the documentation that has already been written because due to um, releases that have been made by the developers, the documentations will be going through changes. So. I'll like be able. To, I'll be willing to contribute my time and effort into doing that. That sounds fantastic. I think on behalf of the whole community, I can thank you a lot for working on the documentation. It's something a lot of people have, have been asking for, so we're really happy to to have you contribute to it. Um, thank you very much. Just to to finish this off, I'm I'm just gonna show your slide once more. If you have any questions, favor you can go over to Twitter and uh, ask your question there. Um, I I really need to look closely to, to to be able to read your Twitter handle. Could you? Okay. Uh, okay. My Twitter handle or... is um. How do I do that now? I can make so... it a bit bigger. No, that doesn't really help. <laughs> it doesn't really help. <laughs> Otherwise, can you can you spell it out? How you how you pronounce? Okay. You pronounce? Uh, okay. Um. Maybe if you can share it on your end here, I'm just going to put it here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I got it here, so I'll put it in the comments. All right. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for your presentation and your involvement in the Mata community. Uh, of Thank course, this video. Has been, uh, yeah, sure. And uh, this session has been recorded, so if anyone wants to uh, watch it back later on, they'll be able to do so within a few days or weeks. And um, right. I hope to see you around in the Malta community. Thank you so much. Thank you. All, All right. right, have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.
All right, so we actually um, have a very exciting session coming up next in around 30 minutes. This is going to be the uh, Multi Community Council panel, where a lot of people from, um, from the team who are very actively involved in the product will be answering your questions. So in case you have any questions, I'll make sure to, uh, to show a banner. Um, actually, it's a link below that you see here. You can already post your questions here. Could be anything about Mautic, the, the product itself, the community structure, it doesn't really matter. Um, just feel free to post the questions there. For now, I'll just uh, show a quick uh, intermediate video. So if uh, you have any questions, post them at the link below. And otherwise, for now, you can feel free to, to switch over to, uh, to a different track for the time being. Hope to see you here again in, uh, in 30 minutes.